In this video, we're going to learn about five Flutter tips that you can use in your Flutter app. This video is brought to you by Shannon Galway, which is the official sponsor of this video. You can check out Patreon down in the description and let's get started. So going to the app, we can see that we have a very, very simple page right here. The problematic thing that we wanted to solve is that we have this column and inside this column, we wanted to have additional items from a list displayed. So what we could do is that we could have another column to display that list of items. But what we are using instead is something called a spread operator. So what this means is that we're using this syntax of three dots before the actual list. So this is a function that returns a list of texts, which you can see right here. And those text widgets will then be displayed inside this column. And we didn't actually have to create another column to display them. So looking at the app, we can see that this is very simple. We have the uh, top bar, we have a bottom bar, and we have this list of widgets. And instead of actually having that column, we're then instead using the spread operator, which actually simplifies the syntax or the code reading quite a bit. So the second tip is actually brought to you by Fireship and you can check out his channel up here. I will link it. Be sure to check him out. Let's see what the example is. So what this is, is that we can have this button and if we click it, we should see that it expands with shadows. And how this is done is actually used with force and if. And to show you the actual implementation in the code, we have just wrapped our code with a bit of value listenable builder and animated container, but the real magic actually happens with the if and for. So when we have our bool check uh, open or true, we're actually doing a for loop and we're iterating five times and then we're returning five box shadows. And this is all done inside this box shadow property. And you can use this in a bunch of different ways. This is just an example. You can check out the code and make sure to subscribe to Fireship's channel. For the third tip, we actually have a tip from Field Stacks. So this is more of a architectural tip. So I will just show you that. So looking at the code, we have a simple problem. So we're using a stateless widget and we want to be able to call on init or init state on this widget. And as you can see, using this custom made widget, we can actually call the init function inside a stateless widget. And this is very simple actually. If we look at this, we can see that on init, we wait two seconds and then we set a value to another value. So just to show this code, we can see that init is happening. And then after two seconds, we have a new value. So looking at how to implement this, is that we're simply creating a stateful wrapper widget. So this is actually the stateful widget. And the only thing that this does is that it gives us the constructor of a on init function and also a child. So if we give it those two, we will call that init function inside the init state of this stateful widget and then just return the child in the build. And that gives us a way of calling the init function from a stateless widget. Check out Phil Stack's channel, make sure to subscribe, let him know I sent you and let's move on to the fourth tip. So the fourth tip is actually a way of giving you better compiler errors. So if you take a look at this, we can see that we have this widget, which is requiring us to give a title. So the way this happens is that we're using a at required in the constructor, which requires us to give a title. So let's give this title. But let's say that I didn't know that we should give a string to this title. Let's give it null. And that shouldn't be possible. So if we actually reload this and check the app, we can see that we're getting a red error. But this error is actually quite nice because we can clearly see what the error actually is. So the problem is the title is not equal to null. And we have this text that actually explains it. So title string should not be null. The way we got this error, if we actually just fix it fast, if we just return this as a string, we can see in the app, 
that that is actually shown as a string. And the way that that works is that we have a assert method where we check if title is not equal to null, then we're going to display this warning. So this is actually a runtime error and this can be quite nice to see what you can have done wrong. And the last and fifth tip is actually from Rody Davis. And you can check him out also. He has a YouTube channel. I will also link his Twitter down in the description. And let's show the tip that he got. So that's actually the usage of Layout Builder. We can see that we're using a Layout Builder to display the appropriate widget depending on the size of the actual uh, display. So for example, we can see that if max width is greater than this K desktop breakpoint, and what is that? If we go to that, we can see that this is just some double values that is contained here. The first one is the K tablet breakpoint, which is 720. And then we have a K desktop breakpoint, uh, which is 1440. You can have a bunch of different ones. These are just some standard ones. What this pretty much is that we can use some if and else to check if we are on desktop, tablet or mobile. So let's show how that works. So we can see that on the right screen, we see that we have this mobile layout, which is a column. And if we change the size, we can see that first off, it's this mobile layout. And if we make it bigger, we can see that it is a row now with tablet. And then in the end, we have the desktop. And this is a very easy and simple way to make your widgets more responsive. I highly recommend you to check out his channel. You can find that also down in the description. If you like this video, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. You can see the other videos popping up somewhere here. And make sure to check out Patreon. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.